안녕하세요. 사와디카. 본주. 본니시와. We are from a l a g a d e n g e We will explain about internal energy, enthalpy, specific heats of solids and liquids. So guys, now we are going to study about internal energy, enthalpy, specific heats of solids and liquids. There are many things that we are going to learn in these subtopics. So the first thing that we are going to learn is incompressible substances. What is incompressible substance? Incompressible substance is a substance whose specific volume is constant. We can find this kind of incompressible substance in liquid and solid. In liquid and solid, we can say that the constant volume and the constant pressure of specific heats is the same. So we can denote Cp and Cv as C. And you need to know that for incompressible substances, the volume is constant. When it is constant, when we take the derivative of constant, the result is always zero. Changes in internal energy. The basic formula for changes in internal energy, which is du equal to Cv dt, comes from the formula Cv equal to du over delta t with respect to v. First, let us look at the graph. It shows changes from state 1 to state 2. We use the formula delta 2 equal to integration of c in term of t dt. The process changes from state 1 to state 2. Not that the changes of state is different from the changes of phase. The changes of phase is like complex liquid to saturated mixture. That is the example of changes in phase. Let us look at the example. When we heat up a solid, there is changes in temperature. In this figure, the temperature rises from 40 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. We use the formula delta U equal to C average T2 minus T1 to get the changes in internal energy. Next, it's about enthalpy. What's enthalpy? Enthalpy is the total heat content of a system and it is equal to the internal energy of a system plus the multiplication of pressure and volume. This is the general formula for enthalpy. When we take the derivative of this equation, we'll get dH is equal to du plus Vdp plus Pdv. In incompressible substance, we know that V is always constant. Therefore, when we take derivative of a constant, the result is zero. Hence, PDV is zero. DH is equal to DU plus VDP only because PDV is zero. When we take the integration of this equation, we, take, we get delta H for the change of enthalpy, and then it's equal to the change in internal energy plus V delta P. And it is equivalent to, this is the formula for internal energy, and plus V delta P. Moving on to the next part of enthalpy. Enthalpy has two parts. The first one is for solids. For solid, you have to know that V delta P is insignificant. When we remember this formula, dH is equal to du plus Vdp. This part is insignificant. Therefore, the final equation for solid is delta H is equal to delta U. We can say that the change of enthalpy is equivalent to the change of internal energy. For the second one is for liquids. For liquids, we have two special cases. The first special case is for constant pressure process. In this process, the change of pressure is zero. Hence, the equation for constant pressure process is delta H 
is equal to delta u. From this equation, we know that the change of enthalpy is equal to the change of internal energy. Moving on to the next special case for constant temperature process. In this process, the temperature change is zero. When the temperature change is zero, so the final equation is the change of enthalpy is equal to V delta P. Why? Because in the part of internal energy, it has temperature, this one. When the temperature is zero, so the change of enthalpy is equal to V delta P. So, that's all are about two special cases for liquids. After knowing that this, the constant pressure and the constant volume of specific heats is the same, we need to know the specific heats of solid and liquids. What is it? It is the amount of heat needed to raise the system's temperature by one degree. I'm sure that all of you have known about this formula. This formula is, by the way, really famous. Q is equal to mc delta T. Q is the heat, m mass C specific heat. This is what we are talking now, and delta T. That's all. Okay, the systematic thermodynamics solution procedure. When we apply a methodical solution procedure, thermodynamics problems are relatively easy to solve. Thermodynamic solution method. First of all, sketch the system and show energy interaction across the boundaries. Next, determine the property relation. Is the working substance an ideal gas or a real substance? Begin to set up and fill in a property table. The third one, determine the process and sketch the process diagram. Continue to fill in the property table. Next, Apply conservation of mass and conservation of energy principles. Bring in other information from the problem set called physical constraint, such as the volume doubles or the pressure is half during the process. And the last one, develop enough equation for the unknowns and solve the problems.